11? Nope, we're on number 12. Episode number 12, All Things Fisker. I am joined tonight by Matt from Tesla Tips by Mountain Ranger, and we have Jim from OSR Garage. So welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for joining me tonight on All Things Fisker, episode number 12. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm doing good. good. Excellent, excellent. And uh, we are actually a podcast, too, for those that actually listen to the podcast. And believe it or not, somebody who is a Fisker Ocean reservation holder, maybe even a pre-order uh, of a Fisker Ocean, they actually listen to this. They work for TuneIn, and we actually got the All Things Fisker podcast on over at TuneIn. So you can check us out on TuneIn. Uh, wherever TuneIn is supported. I think we actually have TuneIn on our Tesla. Uh, they have an app as well. I think it's also part of the Amazon uh, Echo. So you can actually say, hey, Alexa. I don't know if you can do this. It's just a guess for those that, uh, that have an Alexa. I don't have one handy, but um, you can say, hey, Alexa, play All Things Fisker episode number 12. And she might play episode number 12. So that might be kind of cool. Check that out. Let us know how that, how that works. So yeah, tonight we have a lot of people in the chat from all over the place. We have people in Maryland. Tonight we have somebody from Frankfurt, Germany. So a shout out to Bernie B in Frankfurt, Germany. He's probably the furthest away from, from me uh, and probably everyone on this. Um, so yeah, welcome from, from Europe. That's uh haven't seen that since we started doing this. And we have people all over the East Coast. Hello, Rosanna. Hello, Glenn. Thank you for joining us in Chicago. Uh, shout out to him. He is a uh, Fiskarati member. You can actually hit the, the join button down below in, in the, uh, the video and you can join on this channel uh, to help support what we do here. Uh, help us buy a burrito, uh, a taco, taco tray, right? We can, we can uh, do that with uh, some of the the proceeds that we earn from this channel, which is not much. So, so if you want to help us out, you can go ahead and do that. Um, wanted to give a shout out to Mike, uh, who's in Orlando, Florida. D-Man, Orlando, Florida. A lot of people from Orlando tonight. Um, Jose from New Jersey. Todd, uh, welcome. Thank you very much for, for joining us. We have Tommaso from Los Angeles. Jeez, Ryan from Pittsburgh. Uh, Mikey from Burlington. There's people from all over tonight. So everybody, welcome. Thanks for joining. We have uh, a lot of different topics that we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about Henrik's response to the out-of-spec review. We're going to talk about and discuss the Tesla price drop. So as everyone knows, there was some some uh, you know price drops on the Model Y, the Model 3, etc. We're going to talk about that and how it may or may not impact the Fisker Ocean. We're going to go ahead and dive into a couple things uh, very quickly. We're going to talk about Henrik's wall box charger installation, the solutions that Fisker has recommended for the solar sky roof. We're going to look at the latest email for Fisker Ocean One, uh, people who've locked in their Fisker Ocean One, myself included. It's, it's the email that I received, uh, a look inside our Fisker Ocean One. We're going to go ahead and talk about the Fisker Ocean range, the EPA numbers that we're expecting uh, very soon. And then lastly, we're going to talk about something really cool that Matt shared today. It was the Fisker Ocean augmented reality experience that's a part of the Fisker Flexi uh, mobile application. So that's uh, the agenda for tonight. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we have 63 people joining us here. We'll have lots more people listening to us on the All Things Fisker podcast on Apple Music, Spotify, um, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, and TuneIn. Uh, don't forget TuneIn and Google, by the way, Google Podcasts. It's all over the place. So let's get started, gentlemen. We're going to talk about uh, Henrik's response to the out-of-spec review. I don't know if you two had a chance to see that or not, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and share what he ended up uh, posting, and I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, he, he made a post on uh, social media. The one that I saw first was actually over on LinkedIn, 
And on LinkedIn, he ended up sharing a video, which I'm going to post here on the screen. So it's a, a video of the Fisker Ocean in silver lining with uh, some slipstream wheels rolling into a very fancy house uh, on a, uh, I don't know, probably in Los Angeles. So we're going to watch that that video really quickly. There it is, rolling into the garage. And he ends up posting the production Fisker Ocean all-wheel drive has a clear rear-wheel drive bias with class-leading sporty driving dynamics and road holding, especially on the 22s. And this particular post, he must post this stuff with something that publishes them across, you know, LinkedIn and uh, Instagram and wherever else he posts because he actually um, added uh, Kyle uh, and Bridgestone Tires for some reason, but but Kyle, uh, probably because of the driving dynamics, but Kyle from Out of Spec Reviews. So he ended up doing that because Kyle, if everybody watched the Out of Spec Review, which we talked about last week, he ended up making some comments that he thought the, the vehicle was very front wheel drive biased. And it was uh, to the extent where he's had over close to 600 comments on his YouTube video and people ended up, uh, you know, reacting to his, uh, obviously they're reacting to his video. And uh, some were, were taken aback. They're hoping that it was more rear wheel drive. So Henrik came out firing and said, hey, you drove a pre-production vehicle. You didn't drive a production vehicle. And he ends up letting all of his followers know. So did you guys see this? What'd you think when you saw this? I'm, I'm actually surprised he answered. Um, usually he tends to, um, I don't know. I, I, I didn't think he would actually respond to that, but uh, I, I think it's, it's good that he did. Um, Cause we still don't know the final production um, software for, you know, the drivetrain. So I, I think he, in his response, he's, you know, letting people know that yeah do you have any you have any thoughts uh jim on that response to out of spec i know you watch a lot of out of spec um i don't think that um kyle was you know trying to be misleading or anything like that i think um just what he drove that day that's how it felt and you know people can you know say what they want to but you know, Kyle has always said what he felt about any manufacturer. He doesn't hide anything. Um, he doesn't, you know, just tell about the good stuff just to stay on people's good side. So um, if that's the way he felt that day, that's that's what he felt that day. And like Henrik said, you know, it was a pre-production um, vehicle. So that's fine. And actually, Henrik is the one that told him that he could drive it, actually told him to, to drive it. So um, he was there that day. So he should, he, I'm sure he knows Kyle and everything too. So he probably knew he was going to get true things from Kyle. So, and that's yep. probably, he was probably wanting that because he's that way he knows what the expectation is going to be and they can make those adjustments. It's something easy for them to do. Um, so I, I don't think Kyle did anything wrong and I don't think, um, Henrik was trying to, um, you know, point out anything that like Kyle was wrong, but that's just how that car was that day. And there were two cars. You never know. They may have been set up a little bit differently. It's hard telling. True. 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 And I think Kyle went pretty easy on the Fisker Ocean uh, compared to some of the videos he most recently done, like VinFast. Like that one was a, that one was pretty brutal in my opinion. Um, I don't know too much about VinFast, but watching and trying to learn about it for the very first time on that out of spec review, I was I was quite shocked at how uh, how he uh, you know took that for a drive and and it didn't really perform like he thought. And then all the backstory about you know the the company potentially or allegedly um, buying good publicity for for the vehicle. I thought that was all kind of shocking. I, I was like, wow, that's crazy. Um, so yeah, he, he, he's definitely unfiltered, I would say in his reviews, um, which is a good thing. And that's probably why he has well over a hundred thousand, uh, people that, that follow him. So that's it. That's the response that we got there. I wasn't expecting a response like you, Matt, but we got one and that is it. And 
I want to actually bring to our attention, there's actually something else that I found interesting in this particular post. Now, it kind of segues in into our next uh, topic. We're going to talk about Tesla's price drop and Henrik Fisker's response or Fisker's response. So believe it or not, the same post, we get a response from Henrik Fisker. Um, he was asked about Tesla cutting, you know, the sticker price for the Model Y M3 by nearly 20% thereabouts. And Henrik ends up replying right here. He says, just like we did not raise the prices when everyone else did, we do not react to other companies having demand volume issues. We are already priced uh, we already priced the ocean extremely competitive considering we have features you cannot even buy on any other cars california mode solar rotating screen taco trays torque vectoring etc and we got over a thousand people on the waiting list for an ocean one in case anyone cancels so that's what he said there i found that also kind of interesting I, I did expect a response actually from fisker in response to to tesla because it's on everyone's mind that hey i've signed up as somebody who's in my case purchasing a fisker ocean one and is fisker going to you know <laughs> are they going to lower the price to be maybe a little bit more competitive with the Model Y, if the Model Y was totally maxed out with everything that uh, you can get on it, including, say, full self-driving and things like that, stuff that doesn't work great on my Model 3, but it's still a nice software feature. It's just a nice upgrade, um, something that the, the, the Fisker Ocean uh, won't have, um, but at least at, at the beginning, maybe they'll upgrade that down the road. But uh, you know, I, I thought, okay, they're not going to end up, you know, adjusting the prices. They feel they're competitively priced. They have things like California mode, the solar sky roof. You know, they have, you know, 22 inch wheels uh, and so forth for, for customers. There's lots of things. Um, but when you put kind of apples and, and, you know, apples to apples and do a comparison, you know, some people beg to differ that, you know, the Fisker Ocean is still highly priced and it may take, if you're somebody who's on the wait list, for a extreme or for an ultra or a sport, maybe it's better to forego your, your reservation, forego your deposit, your pre-order and jump over to Tesla. Now, uh, I'll, I'll give you kind of my, my opinion on that here in just a minute. I'd love to hear what you think, Matt, as well as uh, you, Jim, on should people in the reservation queue, people who pre-ordered the Ocean One, the extreme, the ultra, should they jump ship over to the Tesla Model Y? What are your guys' thoughts? You might have different opinions. Not sure. What do you think? Um, I don't feel that anybody should really jump ship right yet. I I mean, I would still wait until we find out some final numbers um, and what things are going to be. And just because they're not doing any type of pricing change now doesn't mean that they might not later. Um, I understand not the pricing on the cars themselves is good. It's the features that are added on that cost the bulk of the money. So like him saying that this comes with the 22 inch, you get 22 inch slipstream wheels and naming things off. But some of that stuff he's naming for other than people that get the one, those are all optional things that we have to pay extra for. So it doesn't technically Correct. come on the car. That so is true. in that aspect, I think people just need to weigh their options out and see what makes more sense for them and their budget and their family. So I, I don't think anybody should cancel their reservations right now. I think they just need to kind of wait and see because pretty much anything else that's coming on the market um is is going to be a few months down the road anyway so you might as well just kind of hang out and see what what happens and what fits what are your thoughts um i, I totally agree with jim i i want to add there i think there's two separate issues here uh if you're a one reservation holder i think you're getting a lot of value for your order and I don't see any adjustments on the one being necessary. On the extreme and ultra, 
I think the MSRPs are fine. And, but like Jim said, I think the option packages, if, if there's anything to adjust, have the option packages become a little more realistic. The paint, the uh, interior color are really expensive. So I, I think if there's anything that needs to be cut, those, those should be first. Uh, but as far as like anybody, um, you know, uh, jumping ship on their reservation, like Jim said, I think you need to consider the situation. As far as Tesla goes, I mean, it is a good option. A Model Y right now has become, uh, as far as the uh, mid-size SUV, compact mid-size SUV, a very good deal now compared to the competition. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see some price adjustments from the other manufacturers, um, most likely Audi, um, even, even I think maybe even Ford with the Mach-E is especially hurt by this. Um, VW, I don't think as much because it's a lower price point for the ID4. But, um, you know, I, 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 you know, going back to the original question, I, I think, um, you know, I, I'd wait and see what happens before leaving, especially if you put a significant deposit like a, uh, a one reservation holder. That, that seems crazy to just jump ship right now and, and give up $5,000. Um, because you had to have a car within the next two months. You know, that's correct. So I, I, I share the same sentiment as, as the two of you. I think that um, having already owned a, a Tesla Model 3, um, I ended up saying, hey, I, I like my car. It's a great car. I want a, you know, an SUV now. I want the Fisker Ocean. I made that decision, I don't know, two, <laughs> two years ago or thereabouts, however long it's been I, since I reserved the vehicle. I felt very lucky and I still feel very lucky that I was able to pre-order the Fisker Ocean One and have such an early lock date. I think that for me, it's a it's a personal decision for everyone, you know, finances and things like that. That's a big one. Um, we're talking, you know, real money here. I, I also think we're also seeing real value, like you said, Matt, with the uh, Fisker Ocean One uh, being uh, you know, inclusive of a lot of the features to go to Jim's point that you have to pay for or upgrade on other trim levels. So as far as the 5,000 people who have pre-ordered a Fisker Ocean one with a non-refundable $5,000 deposit, that's a lot of money to forego for a vehicle that you have already, in some cases, you know, I was going to use the words fallen in love with, but, um, you know, you, you really like, and, and you made the commitment. So, I don't think, like you, like you said, Matt, I don't think Fisker needs to adjust any pricing for the uh, Fisker Ocean One or potentially even the Extreme. At, at most, I could see, you know, the, you know Fisker is going to have a hot car. Uh, a lot of people are going to want it. They do have a backlog, last we know, it was like 62,000 reservations. I do think there is a bunch of people who are going to end up leaving to go get the car now versus potentially getting the car six months down the road, you know, end of 2023. Um, it really just comes down to, you know, how soon do people want the car? And um, in, in a perfect world, you know, Fisker would have already had the you know global certification and they would have already been delivering cars. Um, that is a perfect world that didn't happen global certification should be end of end of the you know end of february uh and you know at that point these cars are going to be on the road i think they're going to even become more desirable once they are on the road and i don't think the i think the demand will be there i don't think they need to cut their price as far as the fisker ocean ultra goes i could see them definitely truing that up a bit uh, because the, the thing that really gets uh, the Fisker company in the Fisker Ocean in particular, in my opinion, is the tax credit. And that $7,500 um, is good until I think the end of March for the, the Tesla vehicles. But like if, you, if you're interested in a Model Y at $45,490 um, before the, uh, or I should say after the tax credit, like that's a, that's a steal, that's a, that's a, a good savings. Um, the same goes with like a Model 3 if you're into, you know, wanting a sedan. Um, 
I ended up purchasing my model three for, I think it was like $46,000. Didn't have a tax credit. And you know, it's, it's like 10 grand cheaper than what I bought it for in, in August of 20, it was August of 2021. So great deal. You know, if, if you need the car now, that's a good option. If you can wait and you had been waiting this long, I'd say continue to wait. And, uh, you know, for the people that cancel, <laughs> you know, you're just helping out the people that are willing to wait because they're going to get their vehicle a little bit sooner. Um, the, the, the thing that I, I wonder about though, is, you know, with these price, um, drops on, on the Tesla, uh, are, you know, is, is Fisker going to, you know, somehow are they going to end up, you know, maybe not selling as many extremes or people going to go more to the lower end vehicles because now, you know, Hey, the, the higher priced, you know, vehicles maybe aren't as, as desirable. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. I just a crazy thought that popped in my head. Um, but like the, the sport at $37,500 without a tax credit, that by far and away, um, is a great value compared to the, you know, the model Y, um, the, but you know, who, who knows, who knows what, what people are going to do, you know, who knows what Fisker's going to do. I guess we just have to wait and see, but long story short, I'm not expecting Fisker to, to do a price reduction on anything, especially because there's no vehicles out yet. I think they're going to want to test the waters. They're going to want to see how many people actually, um, how, how strong of a demand their order book has. That's going to be really interesting. Uh, and you know, I, I, I like to think that they do have a thousand people waiting on the ocean one, uh, wait list, but I don't know one person. And, uh, I don't know a lot of people, but in the, in the Fiskarati forums, there's over, I don't, I don't know, I want to say close to 1300 people on there. Now I haven't heard one person of those 1300 have said that they're on the Fisker ocean one wait list. Does anybody know anyone who's on the Fisker ocean one wait list? <laughs> I don't know anybody, but I don't know that many people. <laughs> so, so I thought that was interesting. Um, I hope they have a wait list, but, uh, uh, you know, time will tell and we'll see how many people cancel. But I've been on a couple different forums outside of Fiskarati forums, and there's a few people on there that say they're, they're going to cancel. And yeah, that's to be expected. Um, but uh, there's, you know, on, on Reddit, uh, you know, different stock twits, Facebook groups, um, a couple other places. There's some people that are really serious about canceling. And I just say sit tight. Um, you know, let, let, let's wait for the numbers to come out, the performance specs, uh, and, uh, all the information about the battery that we're supposed to soon hear about and, uh, go from there. Um, I think that's the best thing, especially since we have a lot of non-refundable deposits on the line here. Uh, so that's my two cents. And that was probably a lot more than two cents worth, but, uh, that's my two cents. <laughs> So let's see, do we have any, any people talking about that in the, in the chat right now? Do we have any questions in the live chat over there on YouTube? Um, one thing that we do have uh, in the live chat on YouTube for those that are, are following along here, we do have a poll that we ran when we posted this uh, live stream earlier today. And we ended up asking people a question. Are you happy with Fisker's solar skyroof solutions. So that's our next topic, actually. The Fisker Ocean uh, solar skyroof shadows that we saw. Uh, we saw those in several places, right? We saw them, uh, you know, in most recently in, in Kyle's video, going to, back to reference that out of spec video, but he's filming himself or someone's filming him. Uh, I think in the back seat, he might have been filming himself or maybe his um, colleague was. But uh, solar skyroof shadows, you know, reflections all over his face. And it was like, whoa, he's got squares all over his face. And then you saw the car driving and it was probably the, the first time where it was just so you know, noticeable, all the different shadows on Todd's face, sitting in the passenger seat, on Kyle's back of his head, back of his chair over on the, uh, the you know, while he was driving the vehicle. I guess we've really never seen um, the Fisker Ocean filmed in a driving scenario before from the back seat in the sun. We've never seen that before. That was kind of a first. It's normally Henrik Fisker cruising down, you know, the Magnus Terra test track. Someone's to the side of him filming. 
you never really get to see the, the different angles. This is kind of the first time we've seen somebody in the back seat and see all those shadows going everywhere. So that caused an uproar, like we talked about last week, wasn't that? <laughs> That was an uproar. Yeah. And uh, we got over 10% of the comments on Kyle's video at a spec video. I would say a very negative sentiment, uh, those 10% of the overall comments, over 50 comments on the uh, solar sky roof. And the good news is Fisker was listening. They were listening. They ended up um, posting a... Uh, what did they post? They posted something over on uh, Instagram and they ended up sharing, uh, let's see here, they shared this particular image and it says, why is the solar sky roof partially transparent? So they're kind of doing like an education and then they drop the bomb on us. This is because the solar cells absorb light on both sides, creating maximum energy efficiency. However, we will offer a solar roof shade or extra tint as an option. This will in turn lower the efficiency between 10 to 20%. These sunblock features can be installed after, keyword there, after the car has been delivered. So we did that poll, as I mentioned a moment ago, in the live chat. Um, I ended it a little while ago, but we had 38 votes. I asked the question, are you happy with Fisker's solar sky roof solutions? 63% of the people said yes. 36% of the people said no. So that's uh, that was our first uh, poll of the night. Um, that's uh, what we have there. And I want to actually throw something else up if I can do it. I might not be able to do this here. So there's another poll over in the Fiskerati forums, and that one has 65 uh, votes as well right now, about, about twice as much as the other poll. So we'll go ahead and throw that one up. Um, this one is uh, created by um, someone who I, I really enjoy talking with in the forums, Mr. Bayou Bob, and he asked the question, if Fisker gave you the option, would you substitute a open sky, no solar roof, for the solar sky roof in the Ocean One or Extreme? 36.9% or 24 of the people of the 65 said, no, I'll keep the solar sky roof. 15% of the people said, yes, I would swap to an open sky, even at the same cost. 14 people or 21.5% said, yes, I would swap to the open sky if Fisker offered a discount of one to 2,000. And then we have about, uh, it was an 18.5%, 12 votes. Yes, I would swap to open sky if Fisker offered a discount of more than 2,000. So definitely on people's minds, uh, the solar sky roof. Glad that there's gonna be two options. What do you think, Matt, of the options we have for the solar sky roof for the ocean one and extreme you mean as far as the solution goes yeah we got the solar um, the, the sunroof shade or the sun shade yeah. the solar sunroof shade whatever it may be called uh yeah. or the the tinting are those yeah those, those are kind of what we talked about right we talked yeah about they are kind of before they announced them yeah they are um and what i'm thinking is if they do an after purchase shade it's going to be a very i bet it's going to be like a pop-in shade that you'd get on a rivian or a tesla and that the uh owner can do themselves when he mentions tint ah uh, that's something that would have to be done at a service center or someplace um you know not not done by the owner so that's interesting i'm not sure exactly how that would work and then other people had mentioned that they wanted a retractable shade which I think will be hard to do after because that would require a change to the roof structure and the whole trim and, and everything else. That seems like something that would happen maybe in six months or, or you know, possibly, uh, you know, a future factory update that would do that. I don't think anything, I don't think any of the ones would be affected by this at that point. Uh, it's just, it's all getting started right now. Um, but as far as the answers go on that poll, I was actually pretty surprised, um, you know, at the answers uh, that I don't, you know, I, I mean, it's already been said that uh, they're not going to do anything for the one. They would not do a, uh, a uh, just a plain ultra uh, open sky versus a solar sky replacement. 
it, it sounds like that's not going to happen. So, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, I don't know. I mean, personally, I'm still fine with the solar sky and I'm going to wait and see when it arrives, what I'm going to do. But I, I, at this point, I wouldn't swap it out. What about you, Jim? I I was solutions. never I never really cared too yeah I never really cared too much about the solar roof just because where we're at we're not going to be able to utilize it really um, the solutions though I if they're going to if it's possible to have it tinted I I think that would be the route that we would go if they, if we were going to get a solar roof other than having like a temporary like cover that you would just stick up I think that's more of a hassle than anything else and i i know that i've seen people that have those with the teslas that they do have issues with those falling down while they're trying to driving down the road or they open the window and it blows it and then it just kind of they don't seem to like exactly fit quite right um so i don't know how that's going to work but like i said you know, got it, it I never really care too much about the solar panel, a solar roof anyway. So, it, and I'm not getting it, so it doesn't really affect me too much. Yeah, yeah. I, I would have loved to have an automatic or a, you know, a, I guess a non-manual version of a sunshade. I've never really owned a car that's had a sunshade. Um, I have owned cars in the past that have uh, a, uh, I don't know what is it a. a, a a retractable roof uh so i i think those are are, are pretty cool um you know uh, we've, we've you know always driven with the the roof open or the you know the, the the top open if you will uh and i've always loved that and i actually enjoy the sun you know beating down on my, on my head and my face and my arms and most of the time i'm wearing shorts so on my legs and i love just the warmth of the sun sitting in the you know, the driver's seat or the passenger seat. I think that's a really cool experience. So I've never really, you know, thought about getting a, a sunshade. Um, this will be the first car that's had a sunshade that I've that I've owned. In fact, it's going to be the most expensive car that I've ever owned. Um, so it's uh, it's a very uh, big purchase for, for us here, at, you know, in our home, in our family. Uh, and, you know, I, you know, somebody, I know Fisker's not going to get everything right. Very hard to do. And, you know, I just, I, I love if everything was right, if everything was perfect. And this might be the first, you know, possible design flaw um, that that we've seen. And uh, there will be other issues down the road and we'll just deal with them and we'll talk about them on here and we'll vent and we'll have fun talking about them and coming up with solutions. And maybe Fisker will throw us a, you know, bone here and there with a, you know, a, a, a solution that they'll sell or they'll offer free of charge, whatever it may be. Um, but this is this is uh you know the, the first of you know hopefully few to come in the future where they're going to have to provide a solution but i'm sure there'll be other things there's going to be something else that comes up and uh you know we'll have to just cross that bridge when we get there but i could be wrong um but you know that's what happens when you design a car and and maybe when you don't have um a lot of customer input in the early days you know you haven't just people dog fooding it in, internally and testing it out and i've developed a lot of products primarily software and uh the more you know beta testers you can have the better now car development don't know much about it um other than you know what i've seen watching the fisker ocean go and i don't know at what point if ever you bring you know uh customers in early to do user groups and focus groups and things like that i would imagine you probably do at some point uh and and hopefully you can try to you know root out some of some of these issues but um what may look like an issue to us with the solar sky roof may actually be something that was purposefully done just to have a beautiful design on the interior who knows um benefit of the doubt you know it, it, some people might think it's actually really cool i think Henrik Fisker deep down believes the solar sky roof shadows are actually pretty cool. And he may be right when we get ours and we're out there in the sun and we got a lot of sun here, just like they do in LA. So we'll be uh, seeing it everywhere and we'll let you know, is it something that bothers us? Is it something that, you know, makes our eyes go crazy like we think it will, but maybe it won't, maybe it won't. So we'll have to get back to you on that one. But uh, 
if if you know worst case scenario we go with the tin option we we talked about that last week uh matt and you know i don't know what percentage of of tint we'll have to use um but uh you know maybe a 70 percent tint so that it's not super dark because the problem with from everything i've read when you start putting you know shade or film or uh you know cover over the the top part of the roof you then start getting obviously a darker interior and it might make the interior feel smaller um that's why people like bright you know windows in their house lots of windows so there's light and it feels open and airy and things like that but that you know we're, we're going to be driving in california mode i have a feeling a lot anyway so i don't think we'll have too much issues with uh with uh darkness or, or not not having enough light so there you have it that is the solar sky roof shadow solutions we have two of them we'll uh get to decide later on you know do we go with the solar you know the, the solar roof shade do we go with the tint option and if it's the tint option is fisker tinting it are we tinting it more details to come i think that's the latest more details to come there so uh, we just did another poll. Our, our next topic. This is a this is kind of a fun one. Uh, at least for for me, I thought it was kind of fun. So uh, Hendrick ended up sharing some photos over the weekend. For those that haven't been watching the weather reports or the weather, there's been loads of rain here in Southern California. Uh, torrential downpour, lots and lots of rain. And I think Tommaso, who's in the chat right now, he could probably attest to. Lots of crazy rainstorms up in LA. Uh, we have them down here in San Diego. And it's, uh, Henrik shared, uh, I thought, a couple cool photos of the Fisker Ocean in Night Drive. And something tells me it's it's one of the Fisker Oceans that we saw get loaded onto a trailer. And uh, I, I have a feeling it's, it is one of those because it was, it was Night Drive and it had the uh, slipstream wheels in, in silver. And who knows but um he said hey these are headed to california so i would imagine they're headed to you know fisker and lo and behold we see the black night dry fisker ocean in his garage with all sorts of sprinkles and rain covering it and i thought huh that's pretty cool um it, you know I, I i wondered for a second they probably didn't put any ppf on that car or hadn't done any ceramic coatings but it was still beating up considerably the water. I don't know. Do you guys see those photos? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Do you, what do you think? Do you think there's any ceramic coating on there? What, what, I'm going to actually throw it up right now, the, the image. Do you, if you have ceramic coating on your car like you do, uh, Matt, do you end up getting more beads than, than this? Is the, It's kind of hard to see. The photo is kind of small anyways. Um, but do you end up getting um, more beads? What you got, from Jim? what I saw, I mean, I think it's normal. Um, I can, you know, if you get a good coat of wax on there, you can get a lot of beads going, especially when it's fresh. Um, so I don't know that I would say that it's necessarily ceramic, uh, but it possibly could be. Yeah, it's, it's hard to tell. Hard to tell. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, so, so anyhow, I, I saw this. I thought that's cool. That's the color that I'm going to get. Uh, that's the night drive. Looks looks pretty cool. Uh, still still happy with my selection for the Fisker Ocean 1. We have the night drive, the Black Abyss Plus, and we also went, though, with the black uh, F3B uh, slipstreams. So that'd be the black slipstreams. Now, we did a poll here. Um, one thing you noticed, and maybe a lot of people noticed it, maybe they didn't, aside from that big Fisker neon light on the wall back there there's also the fisker wall box uh pulsar plus ev home charger um he had that installed i thought that was actually kind of cool uh that's the first time i've seen a wall box charger installed in a garage with the fisker ocean <laughs> first time with a fisker ocean you see the wall box back there and it looks like he hardwired it in there um because you don't have that extra plug that we've seen before right Yep. So that's pretty neat. Um, that was the first time I saw that, and uh, we just did a we did a poll here, and the people that uh, are, are playing along at home, I asked, "Have you already purchased your EV home charger?" 
61 percent of people so i should say 34 percent of the 34 votes so far or 34 votes in total i think i just ended it uh 61 percent of people nope still need to order a charger 29 percent yes and it's installed we're one of those people we're using uh, a previously installed uh home charger five percent of the people yes i've ordered it but it's not installed and two percent of the people are planning to use public chargers only that's interesting definitely convenient if you have the option to have a, a home charger uh, installed um i love not having to go out and, and charge the car that's probably one of the biggest conveniences yeah. having an electric vehicle is you don't have to worry about going to the gas station you don't have to worry about going to an ev charging you know charge point whatever it may be at the the library the grocery store your office wherever it may be you just go home and you plug it in and at night it charges while you're sleeping it's a great great experience mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. experience and and how many chargers do you have installed jim i, I just have, have one? one charger just one yeah. charger i think i think matt you have a couple don't you yeah, I got two. I got one right next to me that's in uh, a NEMA 1430. So that's charging at 24 amps. And then one in the front that's a NEMA uh, 1450. That's a um, for my uh, 40 amp uh, charger. So and I have two 40 amp chargers. So um, I got one for a review. So not sure which ones nice. I'm going to use for the car, but I'm going to be checking that out. Yeah, yeah. And that Wallbox Pulsar Plus is a 40 amp as well. So uh, we have the, let's see here, we have it on the screen here. This is, they're still charging the same price as, as they were when it initially dropped. It's $595 US. Uh, it's, it, it looks cool, uh, lights up when uh, it's, it's plugged in and uh, you can install it uh, using a hard wire uh, you know, connection like, like Henrik did. Um, so we've, we've seen a couple of photos where you can take off the, the front plate and you have all the wiring there where you can hook it up, um, you know, using a, a hard wire. So definitely an option, uh, for those that, um, want a little bit cleaner of a look, but it still looks nice. I, I'd say on the wall there, uh, both not only what's in the photo there, but what you've done too, uh, on your, your wall there, Matt, that looks nice as well. So a couple options, uh, depending on how much uh, you want to you want to do it. So um, the easiest option is, uh, but not most convenient, is to go use a public charger. Um, that's uh, your your other option. Now let's go ahead and, and do this. We're going to kind of jump over to to something that I thought was actually kind of neat. Uh, in a series of, of emails that have been sent to people who have had their Fisker Ocean um, orders locked. Uh, you get a series of emails from Fisker. The first one we got was a look at our Keller of the Fisker Ocean. And this past week on Monday, it was actually a week after we received the very first email, we get a second email. And that second email is all about the interior of the Fisker Ocean. So um, we have the interior here. Uh, it is the Black Abyss Plus and uh, this is the vegan leather option. It's the, the option where uh, some people call it pleather. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's synthetic leather, if you will. And I, I can attest to it that it's extremely soft. Uh, it's very comfortable. It's smooth. Um, it has just a very nice uh, texture to it. We sat in it when we drove the Fisker Ocean. We sat in it again when we were looking at that Blue Planet Fisker Ocean at Magna. Uh, it's been in those two cars and it just feels really nice. Everything just felt very much like our, our Tesla model three, but it had a slightly softer, a softer feel to it. Uh, and, uh, from, from what we've seen here, this email gives us a good breakdown on, you know, our vehicle. They, they titled the email, a look, uh, at, you know, the, the interior of your Fisker ocean. It says inside your ocean one. It says, Sean, so we get a personalized message. Sean, you've selected Black Abyss Plus as the interior color of your Fisker Ocean. What an excellent choice. Read more to learn about what makes Black Abyss Plus unique. So they give a picture of, of, uh, of I don't know, plant. Uh, so it's, they're, you know, they're all about sustainability. I'd say this email is all about sustainability. It says everything looks better in black. Black Abyss Plus blends subtle 
uh, black field tech seats with knit eco fabric surfacing, creating a sporty interior that surrounds you with recycled, ethically sourced, durable comfort. Subtle dark and metallic accents on the dashboard and doors add a classic finish to the clean black on black look. So our Fisker Ocean, we went fully black uh, on black on black with the wheels, the paint and the interior. Um, they go on to tell about the, uh, you know, the, the sporty and sustainable look. It says luxurious black feel tech seating upholstery is designed to mimic leather's smoothness while providing unbelievable breathability. Feel tech's dual layer consists of an under layer made of 100% recycled plastic bottles and a durable surface coating made from plant derived products. Each layer combines to provide incredible comfort, impeccable style and a sustainable mindset. And then they talk about how it's, you know, how, how it's made and the chemistries that are used and so forth. So that was the email that we received from Fisker. This is the second email of, I'm guessing a series of emails. My guess is if I had to guess, and if I was a betting man, I'm going to go with on Monday of next week, we're going to get a third email having a look at our wheels. That's just a guess, but we've already <laughs> seen the exterior. We just got a peek of the interior and then email three, just a guess going to be about the slipstream wheels. So if that's the case, you'll see them on next week's episode. Uh, that'll be episode 13 of all things Fisker. So, um, have you guys received any sort of email communication this past week from Fisker? Has any, any, any type of emails whatsoever? No, I nothing. don't think so. Uh, I might have gotten something, but it wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't anything of significance. Got it. Yeah. So that was the only email we got. There was a week where we got like three emails. Uh, I think a couple of them were, were sent um, maybe in, in air, but um, we ended up getting a few emails and uh, we basically got, you know, uh, the, the most important one was, hey, your Fisker Ocean uh, order is is locked and now sent. Uh, the build is confirmed and sent to the factory to to be made. So that was probably the most important email um, that we got uh, in the past, I don't know, week or week or so. Uh, yeah, probably a week, probably about a week now. Um, so. Let's take the take a look at this. This is kind of interesting. I think the next big news that we're going to get out of Fisker is going to have to do with the Fisker Ocean range, uh, the EPA numbers, the WLTP numbers. How far can the Fisker Ocean go on a charge? This is going to be probably uh, you know the biggest news that we get this month, uh, followed by a major news or milestone accomplishment next month, which will probably be the certification uh the, the global certification but this month um i'm guessing and this is just a guess and the reason uh i'm guessing we're going to get some sort of news on the fisker ocean range and epa numbers is because mr henrik fisker posted this over at stock twits um so he, he ended up saying on january 12th so six days ago he said the Fisker Ocean body structure, which is our IP, is designed to house a large volumeric battery pack and extremely efficient powertrain components that contribute to our class leading range. Range update shortly. So I'm going to go with that. We're going to end up getting some sort of an update on the Fisker Ocean uh, range, probably something having to do with the, the EPA or uh the european agency that will rate how far the vehicle can go on a single charge i think we're going to get those uh at the end of of the month um there was some other uh you know post he did i think it might have been stock twits or instagram that we shared last week where he said there's going to be some sort of an update or something interesting that he's going to talk about in january well this is the subsequent post to that previous one so he, he said, hey, we're going to talk about something in January. And then we end up getting uh, this post that says, hey, you know, range update shortly. So kind of exciting. What are you guys expecting for for this type of, a you know, a Fisker Ocean range update? Are you expecting anything in particular? I'm hoping for uh, EPA range. I, I think that would be pretty exciting to get. Everybody's been waiting for that. 
I mean, if if they can also announce the battery size, that would be a good timing uh, too, you know, because it's kind of related. But... <laughs> what about yeah. you, uh, Jim? Um, I hope that they are able to reach the numbers that they projected. Um, most of the time that you don't throw those numbers out there and then fall short of them if you don't think that you can actually get to them. So I, I think they're probably going to be real close. Um, but I, and I hope that's, I hope that's the case because if it's not, that's going to be another disappointing thing and a thing that will upset people <laughs> because they're yeah, really expecting that big range. Um, so I, I think they'll be able to do it, and but it's all going to be uh, depend on that battery size. Which, I, like I said, there's been a couple of publications that have already said that it's well, it's over a hundred um, kilowatt hours battery, and I think someone else had stated that it was somewhere between 105 and 110 or something like that, or 112. So I don't know. We'll have to see. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, we, we've seen in the past in, in several different uh, iterations of the Fisker website, I've, I've seen uh, 350 for the extreme in the ocean one, I've seen 350 plus, there used to be a plus sign after the 350. I don't know what that was supposed to mean. Um, that might be on the optimistic end, maybe it's going to be much higher than 350. It's 350 plus. Um, <laughs> not, not sure. Uh, we've also know that the uh, estimated range based on the simulators for the Ultra, I believe, are 340. And then for the Sport, it's going to end up being 250. So those are kind of like the benchmark. That's the, that's the expectation that oh. everybody has. And also before. remember, uh, that's for the 20 inch wheels uh, for all yes. those numbers. Right? Yes. yes, correct. Yes. 20 inch wheels. And we know that uh, with the 22 inch wheels, we're going to end up getting 15, 20 miles less. Who knows exactly? But um, that's what I believe Henrik Fisker, Fisker has said months ago when people were talking all about, you know, it's funny. There's like waves of, of conversations that happen around the Fisker Ocean. And there was a period of time when everyone was really obsessed about the range and how much of an impact the 22 inch wheels would have. Uh, and I think that might have been when we were configuring something of the ocean for some period of time i can't remember what it was uh maybe it was around the original lock dates uh until we got new lock dates i think that's what it was what, what wheels are we going to choose but uh uh that it's funny how the conversations flow we go from something like that to solar shadow you know solar sky roof shadows to who knows what it'll be next week but it's it is fun i must say it is it is quite fun to to follow all the conversations across different different websites, uh, including the, the Fiskarati forums. There's some pretty good conversations on there. Um, so yeah, it's it's exciting. I'm hoping that the company delivers with what they've they promised everybody or told everybody. Granted, they did say with a big asterisk that it's an estimation based on a simulation. So it could be lower, it could be higher, it could come in right at the number. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. But I, I'm, I'm expecting something by the end of the month, and I would imagine that's going to be a press release type of an announcement. That's a big announcement. So um, we shall wait and see uh, what happens there. And maybe we'll get an opportunity to talk to Mr. Henrik Fisker himself about the exciting news. That would be quite fun. Um, so moving on, we got something quite fun to show you right now. I actually downloaded um, your video, Matt. Here we go. We're going to have a quick peek at the Fisker Ocean in Matt's garage. I don't know if you guys saw this earlier today. This is actually pretty cool. It inspired me to do something just like this. And boy, is it actually hard to line up that car in the garage, as I was telling you. That's not easy. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, they, uh, uh, Ford, yeah, go for it. Ford had a similar thing with the Lightning. Okay. Yeah, I, I was actually surprised how good it looks in the garage. I, I'm oh, actually beautiful. right in the middle, right before this live stream, I'm working on a longer YouTube video talking about how to set it up correctly. And um, oh. it, it's there's a grid pattern that it shows when you're doing it with your phone and you have to make sure you, you get the grid right and then press on the grid and that's where the car goes. So, mm. um, but I think the scale cool. works pretty good um it's i think you're rubbing there in the front yeah bit. yeah I, it is a little <laughs> close I, 
I actually uh, changed it a little further back, but it it's if I have them lined up next to my car, it's about four inches longer than my Model Three, and it it's pretty like accurate how they do the uh, scaling for the three D model. So cool. it's pretty neat. So are you going to have to move your desk out of the way in order to get the Mr. Uh, Ocean in the garage? <laughs> no, no. The way I have things set up, uh, I, I move stuff around because I have everything on wheels. So when I do the studio, I move stuff around and I uh, everything's movable. So I have stuff on mounted on the walls. And the only thing I don't move is my fridge. But uh, no, but it should fit in fine. It's Very 22 nice. feet. So... Yeah, uh, deep. Yeah, it was so. it was it was pretty cool seeing seeing you do that and and being able to open the doors and uh, close the doors. So it's basically like mm -hmm. the configurator, uh, and you can go through the different views, but you're doing it actually uh, in you know augmented reality. It's in whatever yeah. setting you want to put it in. You could have put it in your garage. You could have put it at the beach. You could have put it in yep. your living room. You can put it anywhere. You know, <laughs> if you got enough thing, space. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if you got enough space otherwise it'll run into the wall as i yeah. as i saw when i did it in our garage trying to get those grid uh yeah. lined up correctly was was pretty hard i i gave up and i went outside uh in front of our garage mm -hmm. in the courtyard and i i threw the grid down touched it and boom it was right there um so i thought mm -hmm. oh, that's pretty neat and uh you know i got to see the night drive mr ocean with the black abyss plus and the, the slipstream wheels in black right there uh in you know our, our driveway if you will so it was actually a pretty cool experience i thought that was neat that uh and and i have a feeling that button has been there for quite some time i never i never really thought about it very <laughs> overlooked feature until you brought it to my attention matt so thanks yep <laughs> pretty cool pretty cool so so yeah that's uh that's pretty neat so i'll look forward to your longer video um that you that you have and uh That'll be fun to, to share with everybody and maybe everyone can give it a go and, and see the Fisker Ocean in, in their, you know, their space. So that's pretty neat. Um, I, you know, I think that's, uh, I think that's, uh, I think we've gone through all the, all the topics we had tonight. It was, a, it was a quick one. We did everything in like an hour tonight, maybe less than an hour. Um, so let's go ahead and look at some of the questions and see, uh, see if we have any questions and, and what people are talking about. And, Sean, I got on? a uh, yeah picture of a poll that I ran on uh, oh yeah YouTube. If you want to pull that up, let's check it out. So what I basically was asking people if if they had uh, canceled their reservation after seeing what the option prices are, and it's okay. pretty much what came out even for the most part. So it says if you had did, a reservation some that didn't. Or it says, if you had a reservation for a Fisker Ocean, did you cancel it after finding out the prices of the options? And what do we have? 30% of the people said yes. 35% said no. 35% said waiting for media reviews. And we had 20, what is it? 20 something, 20 votes? Yeah, I think it was like right around 20. There we go. So, so that's interesting. Um, I, I, I definitely have noticed that there... Uh, has been a, a, a little bit of a slowdown of people using uh, our Fisker Ocean referral ID, uh, on uh, which is posted at the bottom of every article. And this started, I would say, in in December timeframe. Um, I would say it's it's slowed down a little uh, compared to previous months. Granted, we didn't post as many articles uh, or write about you know as much stuff as we did in previous months. Um, and we're seeing kind of about the same same behavior, I would say, as December uh, with the uh, use of, of the referral code on, on our site. Um, granted, there's now, you know, a, a NASCAR looking website with, you know, countless ads all over it, uh, which makes it harder for people to see the uh, referral code that's on the bottom of every article. Um, I'm referring, gentlemen, by, you know, the, the NASCAR site being the Fiscarati website with all the ads on it. Um, that was a joke. But uh, <laughs> there's definitely a lot of ads. Um, I, I ended up, uh, you know, putting the ads on there to help fund the site. We got a new server to try to handle all the load. We, we keep getting more and more people um, viewing the site and it's just getting, you know, the costs are getting out of, out of hand. So I had to, you know, throw ads on there because we didn't have enough uh, members in our, in our subscription uh, membership, the, the Fiskarati Club. Um, so I, I had to put ads on there. 
and I give people an option for I think it's three bucks a month, two ninety nine a month to remove the ads. So if you if you like what we're doing, you can go ahead and you know sign up for a subscription to remove the ads. It's a clutter free experience, and uh, it's a way to help fund kind of what we're doing and and uh, appreciate it. So thank you to the people that have done that. The people that are on YouTube, if you want to help out, you can hit the join button um, down below and, and do that. And, uh, for those that don't subscribe, that's fine as well. If you do much, much appreciated. Uh, and, uh, Hey, what well, we like, for... uh, hit the like button too, right? Oh yeah. The like button. We always yeah. forget about forget that. Like button. Yeah. Hit the like button. Yeah. yeah. We, we, I don't know how many people like the video so far, but we have right now, I think at one point it was 150 people watching. We have right now 130 across our, uh, three channels, 111 people on the Fiskarati channel right now. Um, I see 26 likes on the video and there's 111 people watching. Let's try to get that number over 50. So if everybody could hit the like button and that helps us, well, I don't know, you can, Jim and Matt, you probably tell why, how it helps us. But um, I think Google and YouTube <laughs> recommend the video more if it has more likes on it. So on the count of Basically, three, if you yeah. can hit that like button, that would be great. So a one, two, three, press, hit the like button, and uh, we'll see if the number goes up from wherever it was. We're at 36. Maybe we'll have a couple more people that like the video. This this amazing entertainment from the three of us gentlemen <laughs> on a Wednesday. Uh, happens to be January 18th, episode number 12 of All Things Fisker. Um, thank you all for joining us. Let's go into the comments now and see what we have over here. We got a... Uh, we have some uh, emojis of tacos, people talking about the taco tray. Um, sport model owners will need their passenger to feed them tacos. That's kind of funny. Um, that was Mikey. Uh, what else do we have here? Is the show late tonight <laughs> or did I miss it? Um, I don't know if you missed it. I think we started at 6.05 tonight. I think we usually started it. We say it's going to start at 6, but we always start at 6.05 just to give people time to join us. Um, yeah. That's yeah, that's kind of our, our thing. We, we show dinner. up right at... <laughs> yeah, I, I finished dinner too. I got to finish dinner. Um, but like we always show up five minutes late anyways. We get here about six o'clock and, and we do this for fun. So we're not, none of us are doing this full time. This is just a hobby that we do. And uh, it's fun just to, you know, shoot the bull and talk about this stuff. And it, it helps uh, understand kind of what's going on. And it's fun that people actually watch us. You know, we have, the, today we had over 150 people at once watching this, which is kind of mind blowing um that that people you know want to want to spend the night with us so thank you for those that do um it is quite quite humbling um to know that that there are people that uh uh in, enjoy what we do here um so thank you uh what else do we have here? i got so, a yes. i got oh, a go uh oh yeah i got a tax credit uh, question here going on it's uh it says are you still hopeful that people w that reserve the ocean one will still get the tax credit the next person said, we aren't getting the tax credit. <laughs> and then so Rosanna I'll, said the I'll, tax credit. <laughs> oh, go for it. Yeah. What, what else you got? What else yeah, you got? Yeah, I was got? just saying, she, uh, Rosanna said the tax credit was never a factor for them or a concern. And then one person made a comment that Fisker himself said the tax credit is not going through. But I don't know if that was true or not. So I saw a post from Henrik Fisker. I want to say yesterday and if something's changed since yesterday maybe people have more latest knowledge than, than i do but what he said is he said the u.s government you know regulators take forever to do stuff and he's expecting some sort of a ruling or update to come sometime towards the end of march um I, i'm paraphrasing whatever he said but that was what he posted to somebody's response about the ev tax credit whether or not the fisker ocean would qualify for it and uh i'm still hopeful um, that we end up getting more information maybe in March uh, that would tell us how to think about uh, our pre-order of the Fisker Ocean that we did back in August uh, that was, uh, you know, before the, uh, the old tax credit of 2022 ended. So hopefully we get some new information. Henrik still has hope that the Fisker Ocean will be eligible for the tax credit or at least uh, you know, we'll end up getting some sort of a ruling or, or you know, uh, interpretation um, that will tell us yes or no. Did what Fisker did being proactive, letting people pre-order the Fisker Ocean and making their, their you know, reservation and non-refundable pre-order deposit. Was that a good thing? Did it work? Did it not work? Who knows? So wait till March. In March, 
I'll write an article about whatever we learn. We'll talk about it on here. I'm sure it'll be in every forum. I'm sure everyone will be talking about it, and the people are going to be happy, not happy, uh, or, or whatever it may be. But more more details to come. We don't have enough information at this time from the people that are deciding. And I think there's a big. I should make one other point. I think there's a lot of pressure from the European Union that a lot of cars come over from the European Union, and they want. Uh, to have their vehicles eligible for for the tax credit, and yeah. based on how it's written now, they're not. So they're getting, you know, the U.S. government's getting a lot of pressure there. Yada yada yada. We need to wait till March. I love the yada yada yada. Right? Everyone knows where that's from. <laughs> Or they? Don't. Hey, I got I got one on mine. Uh, one uh, yeah. person says about the guy with the Tesla poster. I think you're talking about this. That's right. I have a Tesla right now, and as soon as I get my Ocean, I'll be getting a Fisker sign. So, or at least wrap it. Yeah, there you go. I'll, I'll wrap hey, it. Since this is a nice metal it. sign. I'll, I'll wrap there it with, uh, with my Fisker Ocean uh, parking. So, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, why is this guy with the Tesla channel on the Fisker channel? We don't get it. <laughs> right. So, someone says um, Fisker will produce an Apple car. No. No. Um, that's no, what I think, thinking, I think. I I think it's Foxconn. I think is what um, they're thinking yeah. about. Foxconn is supposed to be, okay. I think, producing that. So it may come out of the same factory, but it's not Fisker producing it. Got it. So the Ohio Lordstown factory producing the Fisker Pair in twenty twenty four. Got it. Uh, so we have a question here. Which. Which and I, ha I have no idea what the answer to this is. Uh, maybe you, either you do. Which Tesla has torque vectoring? I'm going to go with. I'm going to make a guess and say none, but I have no idea. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's the Plaid. Okay, the Plaid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that one makes most sense. That's like a hundred and twenty thousand dollar car, right? Yeah, at least. Yeah. Yeah. And it has a track mode on it, so I would assume if they've got track mode, then they probably have some sort of torque vectoring. I love the background music. Did you notice, everybody? We have background background music. I don't know if you like it. If you like it, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like it, well, don't give us a thumbs down. Let us know, uh, if you, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like someone else did. Uh, hit the funny. thumbs. Uh, hit the thumbs down <laughs> twice. If that, yeah. Or hit the thumbs up twice or something. I don't know. Oh, there you go. There you go. By the way, we have 51 likes now on our, our video. So thank you for the thank people you. that like the video. That's awesome. <laughs> um, there's 111 people watching. Go ahead and like the video if you if you haven't already done so while we go through the questions yeah. here. And, oh, and I, what I'm noticing, I got another. Oh, go for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fine, uh, we have a question about the augmented reality on the Fisker app. And... Um, I think it is iPhone only. I can't. Oh, okay. I can't verify the Android because I don't have any Android devices anymore in my house, so I, I can't test that. So um, I think it may have to do with the iPhone having the front and back cameras with the AR uh, sync between them or something. I think is how it works. So I don't know if Android can do it or not. Got it. Good to know. Um, I got another one. So it looks, uh, it says, uh, looks, this is probably for Matt because Matt, I think, knows more about this stuff. Uh, looks like the Fisker Ocean is using the Atom A3960. This is a six year old and quite slow even on day one. Is this a letdown? Henrik kept talking about how they use the latest <laughs> tech. Yeah, we, we talked about this last week and, mm -hmm. um, It's in quite a few vehicles. In fact, the brand new BMW iX, which is like a $90,000 to $100,000 car, uses the same chip. And that just came out too. So um, I don't know how many other chips besides I know that the Tesla uses the AMD Ryzen, but I don't know anybody else who uses that chip, uh, any other manufacturer. So I don't know if it's a chip issue. A testing issue for automotive application or what it I, i guess we'll have to see how the software works um and hope for the best so there's a question here about the heat pump on the sport it says has fisker commented why they are providing a heat pump in the sport model or why they're they're not providing a heat pump in the sport model even though henrik has acknowledged in an interview that all models will have one So I, I have never heard him say that. Maybe he has said that. Not sure. 
Yeah. Uh, he, he said yeah, it in a was. video with uh, um, t uh, Bjorn Nyland. Okay. Back like a year, I think it was like a year ago or more. He had said that in the video. So okay. but that was the only time I think we heard that. I had seen it several <laughs> different times and in different oh, okay. places where oh, okay. uh, I even saw it at one point. I think I saw it in some of their media or their, uh, oh, their like the press kit, what press they release stuff that they, yeah, their press releases and stuff like that. If you go back and look in the news thing, I, I, I have seen that before because I've actually commented about how it's a good thing. And in, in my videos that all, all the models were getting it. Um, so if they aren't doing that to the sport now, that's, that's a change. Um, but I think it has to do with the battery that they're using. I think that battery actually reacts better in cold weather than the NMC batteries do. Um, I think, isn't that the same battery they use in some of the Teslas, uh, the Tesla model three or something like that? I think the, uh, lithium, uh, phosphate, I think. Yeah for the uh for the base model yeah yeah, yeah that, but i think they were saying that that actually behaves better in cold weather than the nmc so that's maybe they decided they didn't need the heat pump on on that got it so next question has to do with is fisker going to tint my roof for free your guess <laughs> is as good as ours um they may uh, provide that as a, as a, they said, you know, an option that can be installed after you take delivery. Um, if I had to guess, I'm going to say owners of the cars are going to have to pay for it. But, um, you know, at this point, we don't, we don't know. I think they said more details to come uh, when uh, one of the members in the Fiskarate forums reached out to him about that very question. They said more details to come. So we don't, we don't know. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I don't, I don't know how much it costs to tint one window can't be too much um compared to the overall cost of the car uh and uh you know are you going to bring it to their service center to do are they going to come out to you that whole rigmarole of who's doing it and when do you have you know giving your car up for a period of time might be easier just to do it on your own or someone nearby who, who knows at the stage uh the the solar roof shade that might be given or it could be a, an option available for purchase on uh, the Fisker gear section of their site, like the uh, like the charger that we, we showed on, on their site earlier. Uh, so either of those, they might throw it in the back of the trunk for us when we pick up our car and, you know, we can decide right there and then, uh, do we put it in? Do we take it out? Who, who knows? Um, will it be retractable? Probably not, but it could be. Who knows? Uh, lots of Lots of details. We don't know about it. And uh, you can be sure that we'll we'll talk about it when we find out more information on it. So uh, next question, um, uh, I, and I don't really even know <laughs> uh, how it's going to be installed, but it's more of like an installation question. Someone says, can the sunblock, the roof shade, be done only to the lines? Um, maybe I'll just use tape. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly how it's going <laughs> to go it. up. Yes. <laughs> yeah, duct tape works for everything, right? <laughs> duct tape or super glue. <laughs> so uh, that's, uh, yeah, with TBD on how to install it. It might pop in. It might be kind of like a, like a, you know, a, you bend one side. It's, it's like wires all the way around it and you put it up there. We have little solar shades that uh, we end up putting on our road trip that we did on the window next to us they're like the static cling and uh it folds up into like a little it's like metal uh outers and plastic uh shaded in the inside and and you kind of twist it and it can go from it's kind of like a figure eight it can go into like a circle and then you can pop it out and put it on the window my guess is it could be something like that but maybe not static you know static cling could be static cling that could be interesting um but who knows at this, <laughs> at this stage? We'll cross that bridge when we get there. I think first we need the car and then we can figure out all the other the other fun stuff. Um, I was having a thought the other day and, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna actually say it. Um, I might actually remove the button island below the, below the, uh, below the uh, rotating screen uh, if there's another way to access the heat and, and make the screen rotate and do all that. I might, I might remove that. Um, I was thinking about that, looking at the pictures uh, the other day, and I was thinking it looks a lot cleaner if it didn't have the button island. Though I know some people like the the pressing of the buttons, but um, 
already thinking of all the things I can remove off the car uh, that I don't even have yet <laughs> in, the, in the garage. So, so uh, yeah, that'll be that'll be fun. And I know I know Matt's going to have fun adding stuff to the car when there's accessories. Yeah, uh, I'll be taking stuff apart. Yeah, that's your thing. Yeah, yeah, I'll be digging into that hood, even though it's not legal to do so, but. <laughs> right. It's not, not. It's not not legal. It's not illegal. Um, that's I'm funny. just joking. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, that the, the, the someone asks: Is the solar baked into the glass, or is it applied? It likely will not be baked into the glass. It'll be applied. Uh, what else do we have here? Yeah, uh, to Tommaso's point, he says, I think the whole light shadow issue is overblown. The lighting issue is no different than lighting at night or any suburban street when driving under street lamps. Um, light dances across as you drive by, but uh, nobody ever notices or seems to have any issues. Yep, he's probably right. So it's probably overblown and we'll all be uh, rest assured when uh you know we start doing videos of us driving and go oh what 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 shadows don't even recognize them um uh, once again i mentioned we only noticed this when there was somebody in the back seat taking video of the people in the front seat so worth worth noting uh let's see here someone says uh sean why are you bashing fisker um i don't <laughs> think i am bashing what? fisker but uh yeah that was william um that so was that's, uh, that's interesting. That comment came in when you were talking about there. Yeah, the Tesla probably going and the to prices. Be some issues or some things that pop up, like the solar roof oh, and some other things. It. So, yeah. but it's, it's a first, it's reality, it's a right? first time reality. we're building a car, right? Yeah, um, it's reality. I just had I'm expecting you know, problems. Just my, so I'm expecting yeah. there to be issues. That's that's I'm. Uh, maybe I'm right. setting myself up uh, to, to be happier knowing that there's going to be issues with the car. Um, I know it's not going to be right. perfect. It's right. not going to be perfect. It is, as much as yeah. you know, everyone hopes it is, I know there's going to be issues with it, and that's okay. That's how products are made. Like There's, there's things there's... that I have on my iPhone that drive me crazy. Um, and, and how long has the iPhone been around? I have an iPhone 12. Um, I love Apple. Um, just because you give you know, feedback or make an opinion about something doesn't mean you're bashing it. Um, I would say I'm, I'm probably the, one of the least people that, that, that has ever bashed, uh, Fisker. So that's, uh, that's funny to have right. uh, a comment like that, but I wanted to acknowledge it for the people that are, that are, uh, following along. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, even going back to, I had that, that Tesla from 2012 and it was like their first, their first, uh, model S that they, that year that they produced. And the center armrest, it has has two um, armrests next to each other. And you have to slide those back to get to the cup holders. Well, when you slide those back, well, now your arm is clear back here trying to stay on the thing. It was a bad design. And since then, they've changed it. They've actually had those stay forward and put the cup holders out in front of it instead. Yeah. So I mean, it's one of those things. There's going to be little things like that that um, us, when we start driving it on a daily basis, are going to be like, okay, now this, they probably should have changed this. is a little annoying or something like that. But, you know, you got to expect so, that when, when it's the first time a car is being built. Yeah. Do you, I'm, I'm curious, uh, Matt, do you expect there to be any problems with the Fisker Ocean when you get it, or do you think everything's going to be perfect? I, you know, I hope it's perfect. I mean, you know, <laughs> you, you got to hope for the best. I, 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 you know, the same thing happened when I got my Tesla. You know, there were a couple little things wrong that I had had the service center fix. But, you know, and I actually had a list of things to check out because it was known that Tesla has issues. So um, whether, you know, I just, I don't know what else to say. I just hope it's, I hope it's fine. You so. said it. That's it. You hope it's, it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and I obviously hope it's perfect too, but, um, I bet, you know, there's probably going to be something. And, uh, I, I, I like to think I'm very, uh, you know, meticulous with details and, uh, I, I, you know, you can, you can sure bet when I take delivery of that car, I'm going to be checking everything to make sure that it is perfect. And you, you, you're darn, you're darn sure Fister's going to hear about it. If it's not, um, I'm going to tell them right there and I hope they address them and. 
uh, I'll probably write an article about what my experience is like from the very beginning, um, as I've been doing all along. So, um, of course, I hope it's perfect. But if there is something wrong, I'm going to give them some slack um, and uh, give them an opportunity to fix the things and, and not freak out like a lot of people do. Um, that's probably the big difference. Hey, I got so, another question. Oh, uh, somebody wants to know if production is going as it was planned. You want to answer that one? <laughs> I I don't know the answer to that other than <laughs> they started production on November 17th, 2022. Um, leading up to production, they had announced that they did uh, produce, uh, Fisker produced 95 Fisker Oceans uh, that have been sent off to, uh, you know, to, to educate you know, technicians on how to, you know, service the vehicle. Um, yeah. There's been vehicles sent to Los Angeles and probably Michigan. I think we saw one. Uh, we've seen them sent all over the place to be uh, used as test vehicles. So they had developed 95 in Magna uh, up into, I, don't, I think that was like December, early December, maybe. Uh, maybe it was early December, somewhere thereabouts. Um, or maybe that was actually, I'll take that back, early November-ish. I think it was 95. Um, but yeah, production started on the 17th. We don't know to this very point, at this very moment, how many vehicles have been produced or are being produced. Uh, you know, Fisker says that they wanted to, to deliver 300 Fisker Oceans uh, in, in Q1 2023, I think. That was, I think that's what I, I remember. And uh, that means they have to produce those uh, sooner rather than later in order to get them on, you know, However, transportation uh, vehicles, or whatever those may be, uh, whether they're coming across the ocean or they're, you know, sent on a, a semi truck or some transportation device, um, they have to have those made uh, probably sometime in, in end of February, I would imagine. So they're building vehicles. We do know that they're building vehicles right now that are going to be delivered as soon as that global certification happens at the end of February. And uh, I, I'm wondering every day. I'm, I'm actually wondering. Has my Fisker Ocean already been built or not? It's very possible that that it may have actually been built. Um, it, you know, chances are that it hasn't, but uh, it is possible that, that it has. And uh, we, we submitted it back on January 2nd. So you're looking at 14, uh, what is it, no, 16 calendar days. But we got it confirmed, I think it was on the 6th. So that would have been 12 calendar days uh, that uh, Fisker's had a chance to build it. And when I was at the factory, they said that uh, unless things have changed, um, uh, it was eight hours to build a Fisker Ocean from the very start of the production line all the way to the very end of the production line, eight hours. So, uh, you know, they, they can have many on the line at one time uh, to, you know, as, as uh, the, the line's moving. So they can build quite a few and uh, we can only expect them to, to be ramping up to deliver, uh, you know, many, many thousands. Uh, I think it's 42,000 by the end of 2023. And I think that projection assumes uh, that the, the certification happens when it happens and uh, they, you know, all those you know, ducks fall uh, in a row. So if there's for any reason you know, a delay in anything, then obviously you know, maybe they don't deliver as many. But um, I, I think they're building them right now and you know, we should expect delivery, I would imagine, in early March if the, if the global certification happens in the, at the end of February. So I don't know if that answers your question about production, but hopefully, hopefully it did. And I know <laughs> probably just as, just as much as everyone else uh, on the Fiskarati forums that follows the stuff every day. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that are, are more diehard than I am uh, with this. Yeah. So, uh, I, so I was going to, a lot of the people go for it. All right. Yeah. I was going to gonna say, whenever we were talking about um, somebody commenting about you bashing, <laughs> bashing Fisker, um, when I did that video about the blazer and, you know, I had in the title is like, is it better than the, the Fisker ocean? Somebody commented, you're from, you're from Fiskerati. And I said, no, I'm not from Fiskerati. <laughs> I have my own wow. channel. <laughs> you go out name record. You got, you got recognition. <laughs> That's crazy. Crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, so let's let's uh, let's uh, do a shout out here for all of our channels. So um, there's three of us on right now. So when we do this, we actually distribute this same video, so you can watch it on the Fiskarati channel. 
You can watch it on the OSR Garage channel. Uh, that would be Jim's channel. And you can watch it on Mountain Ranger by Tesla Tips, which is Matt's channel. So there's three channels. Right now we have 126 people watching across all three channels. 117 people watching on the Fiskarati channel with uh, 58 people who've given a thumbs up. So uh, I'd say a good, a good number of people like like what we're doing here. We're ha we have fun doing this every every Wednesday or when we have time to do it. Um, we do have some people who are, are still posting comments here. Um, there was a comment I had and this thing just refreshed on me. Uh, any word on Firestone service centers seems sketchy. Well, I don't think it's sketchy, but I think we are laughing and I meant, made a mention of this in an article the other day that uh, or a post to somebody in the comment on an article uh, that has a whole bunch of questions that they said Fisker won't answer and there's questions that clearly I can't answer even as much as I, I read up on Fisker. Um, but service centers, I would say, if you look at the latest press uh, kit for, for the production launch that I think was released around the 17th of November, um, they have like a blurb about service centers and it doesn't really go into too much detail about service centers or how they're going to service vehicles here in North America. But we do know from, you know, details leaked here and there that uh, there's the option, uh, you know, to bring your vehicle in to some sort of a service center that could potentially be a Fisker uh, Lounge Plus. Uh, there also is an opportunity to have somebody come to you, a service technician come to you to do the service. So, uh, for example, we park our car in the garage. Other people might have that same, uh, you know, uh, luxury to park their car in the garage. And maybe you have the service technician come to your house and do whatever servicing they need to do at the comfort of your own home. Um, so that's an option. Um, we don't know anything about loaner cars. I know that was a question somebody asked me in the comments on the site the other day. We don't know how that's going to work. Is there going to be a loaner car? Maybe there will, maybe there won't. Um, those are all the details that people want to know about service centers because typically with a dealership, you take your car into the, into the dealership and you end up sometimes getting a loaner car. Um, even when we, we had to take our, our vehicle in, uh, you know, to, uh, to Tesla to get fixed um, that, you know, we haven't had an opportunity to get a loaner car, but the repair, the fix um, was done rather quickly. So there was no issue uh, with needing to leave and, you know, go on, do whatever we needed to do. So, um, you know, I don't know how, how that all situation is going to work with service centers, but um, you can certainly be, uh, you know, uh, uh, you're going to end up certainly finding out when, when we get more details, we'll all talk about it here. We'll write an article, we'll share the details, we'll help broadcast them out. Uh, because a lot of the people on the Fiskarati site do have that question. We, we have written a couple articles about service centers. So um, there's, you know, just details uh, missing about that. We do know, though, in Europe, um, the, I don't remember the names of the companies, but there are a few companies that Fisker is planning to partner with. Uh, and they're big, you know, multinational companies uh, to do um, the service centers there. So uh, we will learn more about that um, when... The details are, are, are shared with us. Um, I, I do have a question that, that somebody ended up um, sending me an email earlier today uh, about the Fisker Flexi lease. And they said, do we have any new details on the Fisker Flexi lease? And I, I said, you know, no, we don't have any more information. I think the last information shared about the Fisker Flexi lease was actually an analyst uh, on an analyst uh, interview uh, around summertime. And all we know is that there's going to be, some, you know, what we've been told is there's going to be some sort of a, you know, a program. Um, uh, the the program is going to be released, or you know, people are going to start being able to do the leases sometime in Q4 2023. So end of this year, uh, when they start probably producing the sport. However, we don't know if they're going to actually allow people to lease the, uh, you know, all the trims. You know, will you be able to to do a flexible lease on the ultra or the extreme? Um, chances are you're not going to be able to do it on the ocean one. Uh, that is probably not going to be an option, but, uh, maybe the extreme, maybe the ultra for sure. We've seen it with the sport because that was the $379 a month, uh, payment. Um, but you know, you know, more details we have to wait for in order to, uh, to, to find out, um, you know, what's, you know, what vehicles are going to be a part of that, uh, the program and, um, where the program will be offered. I remember them saying in that, that video interview back in, uh, you know, summertime that it was going to launch in select cities. Um, it might launch in cities where they have a Fisker lounge potentially. And all we know is right now is there's two lounges, uh, that are supposed to be coming up here. 
uh, in Q1 of 2023. That would be the LA Grove uh, launch. Uh, so there's going to be a Fisker Lounge in the Grove in Los Angeles and then also in Munich at the Marienplatz. So um, who knows if those are still on track. I'm hoping with Fisker's earnings call coming up next month that we get an update across the board on all this stuff uh, because uh, there's one more earnings call between um, now and when the first car should be delivered uh, in early March. So hopefully we'll get a lot of details there. That'll keep us busy, won't it? We'll have a lot of new stuff to talk about. I got two more questions. Oh. Uh, quick one is about uh, the main screen. Uh, they want to know if it's OLED, uh, OLED. And I don't remember seeing anything that said anything about it being an LCD or an OLED. Have you? I haven't. No, I haven't no. seen anything written written from Fisker about it. Um, and yeah, I, I I couldn't tell you. I I uh, when I when I test drove the car, I I was not looking at that little you know uh, what do they call it? It's like a, it's for the speedometer and. You know, the, well, I guess the they mean either are. screen. I guess maybe oh, the either screen, either or the screen. large, okay. or the I was touch thinking screen. The, thinking the little screen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have no idea about either screen, to be honest. Yeah, yeah I have no no idea. Um, so let's go ahead and take. You said you had two questions. Is that your two questions? Yeah, the other one was um, what was it here? Oh, they want to know about the performance option compared to without. They want to know what if the, the specs are different. And I'm trying to remember the performance option wasn't really about uh, zero to sixty. You mean the it? hyper range? You mean the hyper range? The hyper performance? Know, you they like mentioned hyper... perf they said performance options, so I I can't remember offhand where that was. I don't know. In the I, option, I think that included the torque vectoring and a um, few other things. I think it, there was an increase in zero to sixty time, but it was it was it's. <laughs> it's like three tenths of a second. I mean, it's really not that big of a deal. So is that for the Ultra? But... An option for the Ultra? Yeah. The ultra... The... yeah. Right. The Ultra and um, and I even believe that there is a performance package for the Sport also. Um, but I don't know what, I don't remember what it includes. But yeah, the Ultra has a performance package that you can option. Um, and it's like $1,800, I think. Um, and you get that little increase or boost in speed and torque vectoring, I think. Um, and there might be a couple other things. Hmm. So we have two questions here. The first one about that screen, like where the, I, I don't know, I got to figure out what the name of the thing's called, but it's like the, the place where you have like your speedometer. Driver display. Speedometer, like driver, display. Yeah. driver display. Yeah. Um, yeah. Someone asked, uh, was the angle okay? Was I able to see it when, when driving? And um, when the vehicle, the answer, the short answer is yes. Um, the steering wheel, depending on how you have your seat, and I had the same experience with you know other cars when I had the, the BMW 3 Series. If I had my seat low, sometimes the steering wheel got in the way, and it was hard to see what the you know what the speed was. And that's obviously a critical uh, piece of information that you need. But the neat thing about that other car that I had, it had a heads up display. So I was able to see the speed, um, directly in front of me on the windshield. Um, in this particular case, um, I'm going to have to rely on probably that, uh, you know, speedometer in front of me to see how fast I'm going. So I will obviously have my seat adjusted where I can see that while I have my hands on the steering wheel. Um, even though I unorthodoxly hold the steering wheel, I, I hold it, I guess, much different than a lot of people, um, <laughs> hold the steering wheel. Um, so I, I probably won't. Have, yeah, I know. I'll hold it like this or I'll hold it like this. Um, I actually use the bottom part of the steering wheel all the time. I don't know why. I, I never have my hands at Well, what you, what you um, actually do is you scoot yourself all the way up and then you hold on to the top and your elbows on the bottom of the steering wheel. And that's, you know, drive like a NASCAR driver. <laughs> that's funny. So, yeah, so I, I think it's very visible. When I when I did that test drive on the track, I, I didn't look at the, uh, the the speedometer someone asked how fast were you going um and i couldn't tell you how fast i was going because i didn't actually look at the kilometers and, you're, you're uh, trying speed. not to crash that's what you're <laughs> that doing. is so true that is so true um i still have nightmares about that experience <laughs> wake up oh i didn't crash uh it, 
yeah, until you're in that position, you 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 you, you don't have any clue. <laughs> scary, <laughs> and it should have been not. You know, it's fun, but it was it was scary to to uh, think that I could crash the car. Um, the the next question we had is: Serious satellite radio going to be a part of the Fisker Ocean infotainment? And the answer, the short answer, is no. Um, the long answer is: In the future, it could. Uh, I think Matt ended up sharing last week, we saw some of the apps that are part of Android Automotive, and there was a lot of stuff in there. I think one of them, as an example, was NPR. Um, that particular app, for whoever listens to NPR, um, that was an app, a part of Android Automotive, that we didn't see in the infotainment user guide uh, that came out through the FCC. So um, there will be additional apps that can be uh, you know, enabled, if you will, in the Fisker UI. And uh, I didn't see an, a Sirius XM app that was in Android Automotive. Um, but just so everyone knows, with Bluetooth, you can connect your phone. If you have it on your phone, you can stream it, listen to it uh, on your, your car. Regardless of the car you have, usually it should be able to stream over and you should be able to listen to it. I, I do that all the time with, with podcasts and, and things like that. In fact, uh, you know, I, for, for those that are just joining now, the Fiskerati uh, All Things Fisker podcast is on TuneIn now. And uh, I'm actually, the next time I get into the car, uh, I'm going to actually turn on the TuneIn app and I'm going to search All Things Fisker and see if it pops up. And uh, right after we're done tonight, I'm going to upload episode number 12 and we'll see if it actually shows up in the car. Um, so thanks again to the people at TuneIn for uh, approving uh, this podcast to be on the uh, TuneIn uh, network, if you will. They've got all sorts of cool podcasts on there. So um, check that out. And if we have any people, here's, here's, here's an interesting one, gentlemen. We have any people that want to sponsor this show or, or the podcast, feel free to reach out. And we'll get you on the podcast, and uh, we can we can uh, get our first sponsor. I think people do that; they get sponsors for these things, and maybe we'll get a sponsor for the podcast. Um, so that'd be kind of fun. It'd be fun to hold up and be like, "Hey, you know, we're we're drinking the drink out of you know Coca Cola because Coca Cola is sponsoring the show." Uh, but that would be too that that'd be too too amazing to have Coca Cola sponsor the show or Nike, right? Or or OSR Garage, right? Um, <laughs> So, to 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 you know to to check it out. Let us know uh, if if you uh, listen to tune in and uh, how that experience is. We'll do the same thing and report back to you next week. Um, we did have another question here. Uh, let's see here. Um, have the cars shipped at the end of December arrived in LA yet? And I think we answered that one. I'm going to go with yes. I believe so. That's the one that was in Fisker's garage with all the rain on it. Uh, the black uh, Fisker Ocean, the one night drive with the slipstream wheels, we saw that one being transported and put onto a trailer at Magnastera. Um, chances are that was the one that he was driving here in Los Angeles. So um, I forgot what date that was in December, but chances are it's taken less than 30 days for it to arrive in California. Uh, and he was driving it. So yeah, that's, that's pretty neat. Um, has anybody come across Decent financing rates for car loans. He says, I believe, uh, this is Darren, I believe um, his credit union in Texas has 4.9% with monthly $250 transfer to the checking or savings account. Um, we haven't looked into any financing yet for the Fisker Ocean 1, but we certainly are going to finance it. We're going to likely go through Fisker Finance just to go through the experience and see what that's all about. Um, but credit unions, by far, as we mentioned in one of the articles we wrote, always seem to be the cheapest. Um, and I haven't looked at, I think the last time I looked at auto loans for, uh, for whatever vehicle, they were, they were quite high. And I'm guessing they're higher, they're higher now. I think that was in like September, yeah, October I'm, when I, I last I've looked. I've heard like six or 7%. Okay. Interest rates for them. Yeah. So who knows what, what Fisker will offer as far as theirs, but I would imagine, like you said, uh, Darren, your credit union will probably offer the best rate. Um, and, and we all want to save money, right? We, we, you know, who wants to have the highest car payment? Probably none of us. 
Um, so any money you can save yeah. with uh, interest, that's probably the, the best place to go as long as it's convenient and easy to make the payment. Um, uh, believe it or not, that's one of, <laughs> uh, what the heck. Um, I, <laughs> I worked for Amazon for the longest time and I never wanted to get the Amazon Prime credit card. I know you guys have Amazon packages show up at your house. You guys mentioned that before. I'm sure a lot of our, our viewers have Amazon Prime and I love Amazon Prime. But I've had some bad experiences with uh, with with Chase in, in particular trying to pay off the darn uh, Amazon Prime credit card. Um, so the, who you bank with matters. Um, I think that's important. And, uh, you know, for the longest time when I worked at Amazon, I, for three years, I never got the Amazon Prime card because I always heard of nightmares uh, about having to pay it off and how sometimes when you say you're going to make a payment, it doesn't go through. And I've had those experiences, um, but I have reminders set up to make sure that I do end up paying the bill. But, um, yeah so so who you bank with matters the reason i bring that up is because chase is the one that's actually financing the fisker ocean so um you know i'm, I'm hoping it's a good experience if it's built into the fisker flexi app which i've been told it is then it probably be a seamless good customer experience that's what i'm hoping for but um i've had some some issues previously with chase and uh, I'm not going to let it sway me from, from working with them again, uh, even if that means, uh, you know, using the Fisker Finance product. So, um, and I should mention too, when that Fisker Finance product was announced, they also announced in, in you know, a one, a one sentence uh, mention of something called like Fisker Insurance or Fisker Insurance is going to be a part of Fisker mm -hmm. Finance. We don't know if that's going to, you know, roll out at the same time as Fisker Finance. Um, that would be an interesting product to check out as well, you know, because they have obviously information on how many miles you're driving, where you drive, uh, you know, maybe they can offer better insurance rates, having that information. And if you can have everything baked into the same app, maybe that's really cool. Hey, for everything car stuff, I go into this app and it's just a seamless, you, you know, customer experience. Um, so that'll be interesting to see uh, how the insurance product, if and when that launches, um, you know, with the, the Fisker Finance uh, solution, um, what that's all about and how that works and, and how the two play together and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, some, some cool stuff that we have to look forward to. And uh, I would imagine people who are going to have to finance their Fisker Ocean, uh, one, if they're taking delivery of it in early March, you know, best guesstimate, they're going to have to get introduced to Fisker Finance in February. Question is, is it going to be the end of February, middle of February? But you have to get approved. You have to have, you know, application filled out, hopefully easy on the phone because Fisker already has a lot of our details from the uh, purchase or the pre-order of the Fisker Ocean One. Um, so maybe all that's pre-populated and you hit a couple buttons, put in your social security number and you're all done. You got your, you know, you're, you're approved. This is your interest rate and you either accept it, et cetera, and you're off to the races. So I'm guessing middle, middle of February, we'll hear something about that. It could be the end of February. Um, but that is, that's going to come before we know it. We're already in the middle of January. So just around the corner. Uh, let's see here. I had a, a question up and, uh, this thing refreshed again. Uh, let's see here. We had some questions about service still, and we don't know anything. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. No, I, I, I only know what I, what I wrote and that may have changed. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, since I published those articles, like beginning of summer of, of 2022, things have obviously changed since then. Uh, but, uh, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll end up updating people more when we learn. And you can obviously yep. stay tuned to Fisker's social media and you'll find out about stuff as well on, on there. But um, we'll definitely talk about it here when we learn more because it's something fun to talk about. Uh, so we have this. We have, um, let's see here. So it says, uh, they sent the configuration to Magna two weeks ago. So the real question time to production after configuration lock. That's a good question. So our Fisker Ocean was locked on, on January 2nd. Fisker confirmed the build uh, locked on, on Friday. I think that was the 6th of January. And uh, did they send it immediately on the 6th to, to Magna to have them start building our Fisker Ocean? Your guess is as good as mine. 
Um, but I like to think that they have, and I like to think that the Fisker Ocean's already been built and uh, that it's already waiting in LA to be uh, picked up at the beginning of March. But um, that might be wishful thinking. <laughs> So yeah, somebody has a question um, about no Android Auto, no Apple CarPlay. Um, is there a workaround to use these services on the Ocean screen? Will the Ocean Nav uh, come with traffic updates like Google Maps and Waze? So uh, all good questions. Um, you know, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, those are obviously uh, going to be native there on the display. Or, or, or integrated into the display. So it feels kind of like a native experience. Um, so it's hard to probably get, um, you know, that from your phone. I don't think you can like mirror what mirror your phone onto the, you know, onto the display, unless you do kind of have, you know, the Android auto or, or Apple CarPlay to kind of sync it up. Um, but will the maps, uh, the TomTom Tom maps is what we, you know, we uh, believe will be, uh, you know, the maps that are used with the Fisker Ocean. We talked about that in the forums the other day. Uh, a couple of people provided a, a few examples of those. Will they have traffic updates like Google Maps and Waze? Um, you know, we, we don't know at this time. We simply don't know. Um, I think that would be super useful because they're going to have a route planner or a trip planner or something like that uh, in the, the navigation. So if it had a, a trip planner, route planner, um, I would have to imagine there would be an option to say, hey, take me there the fastest way or take me there uh, and, and avoid toll roads or take me there and, uh, you know, go along this path or that path. So um, they're going to need to have some of that data in order to make the best route for wherever you want to go, uh, including uh, charging stations. Right. If you're if you're doing a road trip to Florida from from California. Uh, you're going to want to go the way that has that's the most efficient for your electric vehicle, right? So you're using less energy and you're going to have to go maybe in, in certain ways to hit charging stations. So um, I would imagine it will probably have something with traffic. Uh, but uh, as far as like, um, you know, other ways, data like traffic accidents and uh, speed traps and things like that, who, who knows? Probably not, but who knows? What do you guys think? You think it's going to have that stuff? Um, currently, for Android automotive apps, Waze is not included. So um, there are some other alternative uh, navigation apps that you can get through Android automotive. But Waze, ironically, it's owned by Google, but it's not on yeah. their Android. <laughs> so I don't know. That's funny. But you know what's funny is I forgot to bring up that last Thursday, the day after our last live stream, I found out more information about the software, uh, the operating system. Hmm. It's based on, um, I have it up here. Um, I, I posted this on a couple of the websites, I think on Fiskarati too. Uh, it's based on the TomTom Tom digital cockpit uh, OS. And what that is, it's based on Android Automotive and it has its own libraries and APIs also. And um, I, we could go into a full thing on this, probably maybe next episode, we can bring up uh, the website and, and all that. But TomTom's um, website talks about the Fisker Ocean. So um, as their first uh, example of their operating system. So I thought that was interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, let's talk about that next yeah. week. Cool. So um, I think that's I think that's all we got. Oh, we did have a question about uh, Homelink. Um, I saw that actually at the beginning too. And those comments, as uh, we we noticed last uh, last week, we we only get limited comments, or it's like time based. Uh, maybe we get the last thirty minutes or hour worth of uh, comments. But someone had a question about Homelink. Is Homelink going to be a part of the uh, Fisker Ocean infotainment? We didn't see that in the infotainment user guide. I think. Um, I saw on the forum as well that somebody confirmed that with Fisker that uh, whether or not it was going to have Homelink and uh, it, it was not uh, a part of it. So um, that's uh, what we know there. Um, and maybe that's a feature that can be added at a later time. I don't know. I know Tesla does offer Homelink um, and you can buy it as an option at some point. Uh, whenever you want to buy it. Um, so maybe it's something you can add. Uh, I think it isn't Homelink, if I'm correct, like you get 
close to your garage, your house, your garage door opens automatically, you go in, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. yeah. So um, that, is, that that sounds like a neat feature. There there are more updated, uh, I don't know how, how many people have adopted Homelink, but I know there's garage doors that are made by like Chamberlain uh, and they have a product called MyQ and uh, that, yeah. that software is... I is Pretty it's funny cool. is I got both on my Tesla right now. I've been testing the MyQ, oh, wow. which was just released uh, um, for the big update that we had uh, for the uh, a holiday update. So I have both Homelink and MyQ, and actually MyQ works better because it's it's a little bit smarter and more advanced than Homelink is. So, and is that a is that a free uh, app that's a part no, of that? No, it's not. No. It's it's fifty bucks a year. Or if you do five years or 10 years, it, it, it's cheaper. So it's, uh, it's not free, which for is my queue. for my queue. Yeah. Oh, um, holy. the good thing is, is if you have more than one car, you only need one account as yeah. opposed to Tesla, you need to pay 300 for each car for home link. So, so if you have more than one car, it's, it's probably cheaper to do my link. So. Well, I'll stick to the garage door opener because that has been pretty good over the years. Um, yeah. I haven't had any issues with the yeah. garage door opener yeah. and that doesn't cost me a thing. So, uh, yeah. uh, and that's probably what I'll stick to, but it is fun to try out little, little gadgets. And I, I love my cube. Uh, we do have that yeah. product on our, our I'm going to do it for a full month and then I'm probably going to cancel it, but there yeah. you go. Check <laughs> it out. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Um, someone says, check out tailwind. Never heard of it. It says no subscription. Um, we'll have to give that one a look. Uh, let's see. There are some gate garage openers that have 4G LTE, about 60 bucks and cheap uh, pay-as-you-go SIM that can be had for $7 a month. And you can open your garage gate from anywhere. That's cool. Thank you, Kent, for sharing. Um, Kent also shared earlier that his credit union, wherever he may be, is 4%. Yikes. Um, so if you think 4% is a lot, huh? you're going to be uh, hurting when you go to, uh, you know, a, a regional bank, uh, like a Bank of America or uh, Wells Fargo or Chase. Those are going to be much higher. Um, well, even the uh, Ford dealership that I get my cars from, they were offering 0.9 for 60 months. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, was it yeah, two when years I got ago? My... It would have been 2.9. <laughs> That's crazy. When I got my uh, expedition in in two thousand, it was zero uh, zero percent financing, and I was like, "Wow, that's great!" Um, and that car payment back then was five hundred and ten dollars in thirty four cents ingrained into my brain. I'll probably remember that that <laughs> number uh, for the rest of my life, just like my Fisker Ocean Sequence number, which is zero four six nine. Um, and I saw someone today posted, uh, a, maybe it was yesterday, a sequence number on Fiskarati forums that was like 63 or thereabouts. So I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. And I think they might be in, uh, they're definitely in Europe, I think. I, want, I was going to say Germany, um, but I'm not quite sure if it was Germany or Denmark. But uh, 63, I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, so that's it. Um, so any any uh, final thoughts? I guess this is... Uh, We've gone, we've gone through all the questions that we have. Any final thoughts for the for the night, gentlemen? I'm good. Same here. All right. I guess my good final show. thought. Yeah, good show. We actually got a couple people in the comments that said, good show. Thanks for the show. Thanks for, for doing this. So you're welcome. Thank you for listening. Um, my final thoughts are be patient. Uh, you know, we, we still have a lot of waiting to do and, and hopefully this is a, a fun uh, show for people to uh, help pass the time as they wait for their Fisker Ocean. Um, we're, uh, you know, excited for what's to come at the end of, of the month, which is the, the hopefully the EPA numbers. That'll be uh, what's on our radar on our, uh, I should put it on the whiteboard back there. Maybe I should start using that whiteboard for, for the show, put all the fun things that we're, we're looking at and check them off each week. Um, but we're looking forward to that. Uh, we're looking forward to the earnings call in February, and we'll have more information there. Um, we're being patient as sequence number 0469, and uh, this is episode number 12 of All Things Fisker. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, and we uh, will likely see you again next week. So take care. Bye.